Well, actress Selma Hayek revealing a big secret from her past, telling the Spanish version of V magazine, once upon a time, she was an illegal alien living in the United States without the proper documents when she first came here to study acting. Hayek, who is now a naturalized U.S. citizen, wants to raise awareness about discrimination against illegals who work here. New attacks from leading Democrats criticizing the president for preventing a tax hike for millions of Americans. Now poised to do everything in their power to block this deal, which the president struck with the Republicans, from going through. But the president accusing his colleagues on the left of putting politics ahead of the American people. If that's the standard by which we are measuring uh, success or core principles, then let's face it, we will never get anything done. People will have the satisfaction of having a purist position and no victories for the American people. And we will be able to feel good about ourselves and sanctimonious about how pure our intentions are and how tough we are. Richard Sakharides is the former special assistant to President Clinton and my guest now. Richard, all right, so you see the president there. In terms, I mean, if I could count the number of headlines that I saw this morning talking about angry Democrats and how angry they are with him and the left wing upset and... It's kind of a mess here. Right, so, I mean, what... He's, he's fighting not with the Republicans, but with the left wing of the Democratic base, some of whom are now saying, we're trying to maneuver so you don't even get a vote. You're not even going to get a vote on this if we have our way on Capitol Hill which would be a disaster for this president, would it not? It, well, that would definitely be a disaster. I mean, I don't think that's happening. I think there, I don't think that will happen. I mean, I think there are a couple of members of Congress now talking about that. I think it's a very far-fetched idea. But what I do see here today is the kind of anger that I have not seen really in a very long time. I mean, it's kind of a mess here for the Democrats. You notice the Republicans are laying very low. No, you don't hear anything from the Republicans. It's but true. the Democrats are engaged in this fight against each other. I mean, you, I think what you see is a lot of residual anger showing from the defeats that people had in the midterms. You know, people sort of were kind of nice to each other after that. But now what you're seeing is the Democrats are saying, we don't think, we think the president was outmaneuvered. We don't think he fought hard enough. We thought he gave in too early. Wait, 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 I want to ask you about that because Congressman Weiner was on uh, less than yeah, an hour ago. I saw ago. that. Okay, yeah. He wasn't really angry at you, though, you know. <laughs> you were very gracious to him. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, he was angry, though. He was not he happy was camper today. And, and, and he, there, there's a fight now because the, the president looked at the Democrats yesterday in the House and basically said, don't tell me I punted on third down. This is not exactly what he said, but this was his message. Don't tell me I punted on third down. You control the House of Representatives, and you punted this fight until now. Here we are, December 8th, and all these experts are saying payrolls are going to be completely messed up. The IRS commissioner is coming out and saying refunds are going to be de uh, delayed and so on. I mean, already, never mind if we let this thing go into January. And he's pointing the fingers at the House, and you, and you heard Weiner saying, no, he rejects that. He's putting it back on the White House. Well, you know, the Republicans strategically did a really smart job on this. I mean, they had, they had this, they kind of jammed the president because they knew that these tax rates on these lower income and middle income people would go up if the president didn't reach a deal. So the president definitely got jammed. I don't know if he got outmaneuvered, but it looked like, uh, you know, this was the only deal he could get. And I personally believe that at this moment he got the best deal that he could. But what the problem was, was that over the course of the last two years, you didn't really see the kind of effective arguments that the Democrats could have been making. And now they're just mad at each other. You know, it's sort of like that, that psychological thing where when things go bad, you take it out on the people you love. Well, it's like they're firing at each other. Well, what, what, what kind of damage is this doing to the president? I mean, it may, the president may have won some points with the independents and the more moderate yes. uh, wing of the party which, with whom he was struggling prior to this. But he's alienated the left wing of the base. And what, what kind of damage are they doing now to this president uh, as we go into sort of the next presidential election? And he needs to be shoring up that coalition, not fracturing it. Yes, well, I think you see a couple of things at work here. First of all, I think you see a calculation by the White House political team that they will not, that no matter how, how angry the left gets at them, they will not be challenged on the left, that the president will not be uh, challenged by a uh, Democratic, in a Democratic primary, 
by a left-leaning candidate. And I think that's a pretty good calculation. So I think what you see is that the president is now going for the middle and that the most important voters to him now will be voters in the middle, the independent voters, and he's trying to demonstrate to people that he can compromise, that he can make a deal. And, you know, I think it also reflects to a certain extent that the president's understanding and the White House team's understanding that elections have consequences. You know, if people wanted him to hold out on this, they would have voted for Democratic congressional candidates. I mean, elections have consequences. These are the consequences of this election. I mean, you and I predicted the day after the election on this show, the Wednesday after the election, that a deal on tax cuts was coming. And now, you know, it's several weeks later, but here we are. Yeah, December 8th. And uh, maybe like yesterday, it'll, it'll be a day that'll go down in infamy. Well, you know, and the president bringing up the public option, my God, that was probably the worst thing to say because, the, the, you know, that wound is still, is still an open wound. Have and a little still, salt. It, it's still an open wound. You know, progressives well, still believe Well, you heard Wiener. I mean, yeah, I, I asked him about it. He got started all over again. Like, that was the answer that would have so solved everything. I mean, they're just, you know, it's sort of like it didn't happen. So. Well, he's a little argumentative by nature, you know, they say, I'm told. But, but he's definitely having a 10-day on in the argumentative <laughs> scale. Well, we, we appreciated him coming on. Uh, Richard, yeah, we always appreciate you You were very nice to him. Well. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Richard Saccharides, everybody.